Okay, for all of you who were good and did not eat up the fruit, we have an experiment for you to participate in. I'm going to take you through the experiment. I am not telling you what hypothesis we are testing, but there will be several people available afterwards to tell you about it at the party. And tomorrow morning, if you go to the exhibit area, the data will be on a poster. With the people who are going to uh, help explain, stand up quickly so people can identify them. Renee, great. Scott, Deb, wonderful. You can ask all of us questions about it. We can tell you after. Uh, the experiment. Okay, what I'm going to do is explain how we're going to scale this first and take you through that part of this questionnaire. Then I'll have you taste the fruit, rate it, and then while we're waiting um, for the miracle fruit to take effect, and I'll explain that in a moment, I'll have you fill out the demographics. So that's the order we'll go in. So to begin with, we're going to use a rating scale, and it's written down here. And the sensations, uh, this scale goes from 0 to 100, where 100 is the strongest sensation of any kind you have ever experienced. Think about it and circle whatever was the strongest sensation for you, whether it was a sound like a jet plane taking off or a fire engine, a light like staring at the sun, pain, the worst pain you've ever had, uh, touch, uh, taste, or smell. It, whatever for you is the most intense, that for you is going to be 100. Now, we're going to give you some practice items. So with the pencil you were given, on that scale of 0 to 100, mark the number of the brightness of a dimly lit restaurant. From 0 to 100, how would you rate the brightness of a dimly lit restaurant? Now, mark the brightness of a well-lit room. Put that number in that square. Rate the brightest light you've ever seen. The loudness of a whisper. The loudness of a conversation. The loudest sound you've ever heard. And the strongest pain you've ever experienced. You have now constructed for yourself a scale of your sensory world. All sensations you've ever had go somewhere on the 0 to 100. And I'm going to ask you to rate the attributes I'm going to describe of this fruit on that scale. So we begin <clears throat> with a strawberry. Sniff the strawberry and rate the strawberry odor. Take a bite of the strawberry, rate its sweetness, its sourness, and as you chew and swallow it, rate the intensity of the strawberry flavor. Mm. When that's finished, Move on to the lemon. Sniff it. Rate the lemon odor. Take a bite of it. Rate the sourness, the sweetness, and the lemon flavor as you swallow it. And then there is a tablet, packaged almost like a vitamin might be. Pop it out of its case. This is freeze-dried miracle fruit, a tropical West African berry you'll learn more about tomorrow morning. And put it in your mouth. You want this to dissolve on your tongue. The effect of miracle fruit is contact. Rub it across your tongue. And if you chew it very gently and keep the fragments, don't swallow it, don't eat it, but chew it so that the fragments will spread across your tongue. And this will speed the process a bit. And while you're doing this, Fill out the demographic information on the sheet, sex, age, height, weight, and so forth. And remember, the better you contact your tongue with this material, the better the effect is going to be.
How are we doing? Is the tablet dissolving? Takes a while. Mine's doing well. I chewed it up. The fragments are spread all over my tongue. The better you do this, the better the effect will be. I'll just cheat and see how it's doing. I'm there. We'll see how many of the rest of you are. Okay, let it dissolve. How many is it pretty much dissolved now? Excellent. When it's dissolved, do the second part, the after. Again, sniff the strawberry, take a bite of it, rate the sweetness, the sourness, and the strawberry flavor. You'll probably want to eat both strawberries at this point. After you have finished the strawberry, the lemon, sniff it, bite into it, rate the sweetness, sourness, and lemon flavor. Anybody noticing anything interesting? Hand these in, and some wonderful people at APS are going to tally the data so you can see them tomorrow morning. Okay, we'll start with the symposium proper, and the rest, next discussion you will hear about this will be at the party or tomorrow morning. Now, as we were planning this, Tyler Lorig is chair of your program committee, and Tyler asked me, what are you going to say at the beginning of this symposium? I said, well, I wasn't going to say very much. We don't want to take a lot of time. We have these wonderful talks coming up. And he said, you have to say something about why you've organized a symposium about spices. Well, first, it was Mimi Sheraton's idea. But I thought to myself, Tyler, I said, Tyler, why don't you tell me what you'd say if you were in my place? And he sent me a wonderful email. And I'm going to read his words. Some of you are, no doubt, wondering why you are about to listen to a bunch of distinguished people tell you about spices at a psychology conference. It is, of course, true that it will be incredible fun, and you'll learn some things that will surprise you. But many of you have to be wondering, what does this have to do with psychology? The answer is as plain as the nose on your face. Is it, about, it is about understanding how flavor shapes what you do and who you are. Tomorrow, Julie Manella will show you how intimately flavor is connected to our family and cultural identity. Today, the people on this stage will talk about how humans love and use spice. Spice has, of course, shaped the contours of human history. Explorations have been made in wars fought over spice. Few commodities were more precious to humans just a few centuries ago. Why would you fight a war or build a road for spice? It's because flavor matters to people. It shapes what they do, what they eat, and especially how much they eat. The obesity crisis in America is due in part to the fact that we are driven to self-stimulate ourselves with flavors. This is a crisis that would benefit from the clear thinking and clever experiments psychologists can bring to bear on this issue. Spice is just a single example, but one that goes to the heart of the choices we make based on flavor. And I thank you very much, Tyler. I love those comments.